Hi everyone, this is Heather Smith with Storyville Photography, and today I'm going to show you this edit of my son, um, one of my dad's tractors. He is totally loving life here and in his happy place. So this is the final image, and this is the before. So where we're going to get started, and the final product. So the first thing I'm going to do is open my image up into Lightroom. You can also do this into Camera Raw, but I chose Lightroom for this edit. So I'm going to first select the Simplicity 7 preset, and I'm just going to warm the image up a little bit to about right there using the temp slider. And now I'm going to open that up into Photoshop. Okay, so now that we're in Photoshop, the first thing I want to do is just clean up a couple things. So I'm going to zoom in ever so slightly. I have my clone stamp at 100% opacity and flow, and I'm just going to get rid of this caution sticker by sampling different areas of this metal here and make it disappear because your eye is kind of drawn to it and I don't want the focus on a sticker. So that is gone and I also want to take care of this dark place over here. So again I'm just going to expand my cologne stamp and sample from here. Make sure the edge is kind of lined up so you don't have a distinct line. I'm going to sample again. And boom, that was easy enough. Uh, while I have the clone stamp, I'm going to add some of the greenery over here. So I'm going to sample that tree and just kind of add in some of the green. And that looks good to me. So I probably should have done that on a separate layer if I wanted to mask anything off, but this time it worked out completely perfect. So anyway, um, down to the fun stuff. I'm going to first brighten up his eyes a little. As you can see, they're pretty dark. Um, so I'm just going to give him a little bit of brightness by going into the retouch action and hitting play. I'm going to click the brighten eyes and make sure that I have a soft white brush at 100% opacity. And if it comes on too strong, I can always dial back the opacity in the layers panel. But I think I'll keep it like that. That looks good. And then I'm going to just brighten the skin a little bit. I will have to decrease this because it's going to come on really strong. Just a little bit on his fingers. And then that looks good. And maybe we will give him some rosy cheeks while we are there. So I'm going to go into the um, rosy cheeks and lips and hit play. Open that up. I'm going to do the vibrant coral. And just touch him up on his cheeks a little. Crank it way down. And that looks good to me. So before and after, before and after. Now I'm going to zoom back out, and I want to run the ultimate dodge and burn. I just love this action. It's one of my favorites. Um, so I'm going to start with this close. If you have more than one subject, I suggest you duplicate this layer by hitting Command-J, and you can do that for as many subjects as you want. For here, I only have the one, so I just need the one layer. And I'm going to brush it on with a soft white brush at 100% opacity. And this comes on a little dim, but you can crank it up as high as you would like. That looks about good to me. Really made a shirt pop. And the combo dodges and burns at the exact same time. I just love it. For his pants, so you can kind of get an idea of just the basic dodge and the burn, I'm going to run this over his pants. We can also play with opacity on the layers um, as well. I think I'll have to tone down the dodge a little bit. So click back on there. And boom, that looks pretty good to me. That's the before and after. I think I want to run a little bit over the, his head, his hat here. And that looks good to me. And then you can go into the dodge and burn skin and hair. I already kind of brightened his face up with the retouch. Um, so the only thing I really want to do is dodge his hair a little. And really make his blonde pop. Okay. 
and that looks good. So this is the before and the after. So fun. Uh, we're not done quite yet. We're going to go into the environment and I'm going to do the dodge and burn combo. I'm going to go ahead and grab my white brush and paint it on on the wheels and then I'm going to paint it on here in the back and around here. I don't want to do it on the yellow. It seems like when I dodge and burn on yellow sometimes it just turns out kind of wonky and this is already shiny. So I'm going to just kind of burn it a little to dim it down. And then I also might run it across here too. And that looks good to me. I am going to dodge some of this inner um, pine needles. I really like what it adds to the image. Okay, so we are done with the dodge and burn. And you guys can duplicate any of these layers to make it more intense um, if it doesn't quite do it for you. Oh, sorry, not done just yet. Just kidding. I want to about 50% opacity run the dodge over these trees in the background just to kind of make it stand out a little bit more. Okay, now I promise we're done with that. <laughs> now I kind of want to make his um, the lights appear that they are on and add a little glow. You guys, you can use the sun overlays for this. It's really easy. So all you need to do is Command A to select it, Command C to copy it, and then Command V to place it on top of the image. Set it to screen mode and then you're going to want to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and add a slight blur to it or you're going to get lines um, from where the overlay ends. But that helps solve the problem. And then I'm going to hit Command T to retransform and I'm going to dial it down quite a bit. Just resize them to fit and make it look a little bit more natural. And that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to hit the checkpoint and I'm going to duplicate that command J and the command T to move it and bring it over here. And that looks good to me. And you can always play with the opacity if you don't want it at full um, extent. I might keep it around, eh. no, that's a little too bright. It kind of overpowers them. So I'm going to take it down to about 80%. And that looks good to me. So that's the before and the after. And now I want to add the Storyville image base or run it rather. Um, so I'm going to go to here and hit the play. And I'm going to make adjustments to this as well. So I don't want the brighten up. So I'm going to turn that layer off and we're good on the contrast. I don't really need to add any contrast here, but I do want to leave the darkened edges. I want to make sure it's not on his skin at all. So I'm going to take a soft black brush at 100% opacity and just make sure it's not on him. And then I want to take some of that off of the trees. So at about 50%, 51%, I'm going to just kind of brush that off. Um, but I think I'll leave it at the um, 74%, which is what it's programmed at. And then I like the color dazzle as is. So I'm going to leave it at about 15%. And that is the before and after. It kind of brought down um, some of the midtones at the bottom here. And I just really like the dimension it adds to it. So now what I want to do is run the painterly action and then the smoothing and sharpening action. And for both of those, you're going to have to run them on your background layer. So make sure you go to Layer and Flatten Image and hit OK. And now I'm going to run the Painterly action. Now since I already did um, these three steps on the image base, I don't need to use them here. But if you don't have the image base or you want to still add a little bit of brightness or color dazzle or contrast, go ahead and turn these eyeballs on and you can make all the adjustments you want. But for me, I'm going to just keep that off. And as you can see, it kind of took on this animated look, which I just love for this image. So, but I don't want it on his face. He looks a little creepy, if you ask me, and his little hands. So I'm going to take a soft black brush at about 
50, 60% opacity. You can do it at full, 100% if you'd like. And I'm just going to click on it a couple times to start masking some of that off. And I'm going to turn it down a little bit more. And this just kind of blends and brings back some of the details, but it also leaves it looking really dreamy, which I just love. So that looks pretty fun to me. What do you guys think? So that is the before in the after and you can also if you really wanted to take this up a notch you could run it again and really increase the impact of the painterly look but for this i'm just going to kind of leave it as is because it looks good enough to me and then i am going to flatten this so layer and flatten and then i am going to go into the smoothing and sharpening action and hit the step one play and this just smooths it out even more. It's so magical in my opinion. Um, I'm a little biased, but I just love it. And I'm going to keep this at about 50%. And then I'm going to hit the step two sharpening. Hit play. And I am going to leave that at about, I don't know, 31%. And that looks good to me. And now I just want to bring back a little bit more brightness. So I'm going to grab a curve adjustment layer and I'm going to pull up the highlights just to where I see the trees kind of popping. And that looks good. And then I'm going to invert it by clicking on the mask and hitting Command I and then making sure I have a soft white brush at 100% opacity. And I'm just going to kind of paint this on and make the trees pop out a little bit more. Maybe the tires. A little bit off of there and that looks good to me guys um, this is where we started and then where we finished you can find everything I used here at www.storyvillephotography.com have a great day bye guys